Latin America, Lesson 6. Today we will be discussing a region of the world that spans two continents called Latin America. Part of Latin America includes Mexico and Central America. Mexico and Central America are both included in North America, but because of history and heritage and culture are included in the region of Latin America. South America and the Caribbean Islands, too, are a part of Latin America, both for the same reasons. I would like for you to follow on your guide and look up the word archipelago and write a definition on your guide that goes with this word. The Caribbean Islands are made up of a few archipelagos. The Greater Antilles and the Lesser Antilles are probably the more well-known, too. Now, let's begin by talking about Mexico, which is actually, actually included in North America. An agreement making trade easier for the three North American countries, the Canada, the U.S., and Mexico, is called NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. It eases tensions and trading between these three countries, allowing goods and materials to flow. When discussing United States and South America, we must also talk about gangs and drugs. Drugs make their way from South America and Mexico into the United States by way of highway once they cross the border from Mexico to the U.S., traveling up mainly I-35, which cuts our country into two, and then splintering off from there to make it uh, onto the market as illegal drugs. Now, we're talking about a vast amount of um, drugs and money, millions and millions and millions of dollars that comes into the United States from South America on a yearly basis. Some of the drugs have been caught at the border, and we know that people go to great lengths in order to get the drugs smuggled into the United States hiding them into a variety of um, places in cars in panels of cars um, also inside gas tanks where they actually dismantle um, the gas tank and wrap the drugs um, putting them back into the gas tank and then attaching the gas tank back to the car filling it back up with gas and driving it across the border so because they go to these great lengths to uh, get drugs into the country, um, you can imagine they're worth quite a bit of money. Um, and with that goes uh, the power and control of controlling this drug trade, as well as the money that is made from the drug. The next topic is Border Patrol, governed by our Department of Homeland Security. The job of Border Patrol is to maintain our border keeping it safe and secure, and from keeping people from coming into our country illegally. This job is difficult, especially at night. Many people are stopped as they try to enter our country illegally on their way from Mexico or from other Central American countries into the United States to start a life that is more favorable than the one that they left. Spatial inequality in Mexico City. In Mexico City, probably the phrase that sums it up best is that there is not enough. There is not enough land, housing, or clean water. There is not enough jobs for everyone, which causes more poverty and crime rates to increase. There is not enough land for everyone to use. In fact, only 15% of Mexico's land is good for farming. In fact, most land is held by only a few small wealthy owners, and small-time farmers can't compete with the big farmers because they can't afford to buy seeds, fertilizer, and machinery enough to end up with enough crop to sell and be competitive in the market. Farmers then migrate to the city to find a better life. A lot of it has to do with getting their children into schools and um, having a higher standard of living and a nicer life for their children. Let's talk briefly about the history of Latin America. It is important to remember that this region was colonized by the Europeans and the Colombian exchange which affected this land greatly. This is the movement of plants and materials as well as diseases from Europe to the New World. You can see in the diagram 
that the Columbian Exchange included things from the old world being transported to the new world and vice versa. Now you might also be familiar with triangular trade which includes one other stop and that would be with Africa because we also see an influx of Africans to this region during this time period as they were brought here to work on plantations and farms. The Panama Canal which was started and completed in 1904 was a shortcut between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. It saved many weeks time in shipping from say New York to Asia because instead of sailing all the way around South America and Cape Horn and going back up north to Asia you could now cut through the Isthmus of Panama. Panama was once controlled by Colombia. When the United States approached Colombia about the canal, Colombia refused. And so the United States got behind Panama as they fought for their independence. Once they gained independence, Panama granted the U.S. the rights to build this canal. Government. Although many governments are republic, republics, this region has been plagued with struggles for freedom, both economically and politically. This region is seen as unstable. It is a work in progress. People sometimes don't have the things that they need or a higher standard of living, depending on the country in which they live. In the 1970s, large numbers of people have left the islands in the Caribbean in pursuit of better economic opportunities and to escape civil wars and unstable political situations. Puerto Rico is a special place. It is a commonwealth of the U.S., which means it is a self-governed territory. Puerto Ricans are actually U.S. citizens, which means they can serve in the military, but they cannot vote in U.S. presidential elections. This leaves a sour taste in the mouths of Puerto Ricans for the most part, and there has been discussion about adding Puerto Rico to the United States as its own state. Recently, Puerto Ricans voted over 50% to do this. Now, it would take an act of Congress to actually grant statehood to Puerto Rico. And most Puerto Ricans I know are proud to be Puerto Rican and do not desire to become a state of the United States. Culture. Let's briefly talk about culture. The primary language spoken in Central America is Spanish, and religion is Catholicism. In South America, many people speak Spanish, but you will also find other European languages, such as French and Portuguese in Brazil. It is common to be bilingual and to speak more than one language, maybe even a native dialect. Native Americans have had great influence on the arts and music, as there are many indigenous peoples. Generally, children are required to complete elementary school, but few actually do for a lack of supplies, money, clothes, and the distance is too far. Many sports are popular, and family is the basic unit of society. Matriarchal is the structure of the family, meaning the mother heads the household. There is also heavy African influence, just as there is indigenous influence in art and music in the Caribbean islands. Now, geoterms. On your follow-on guide, you should define the following terms. Please stop and pause as needed. Indigenous people. Simply put, these are natives of a region. Natural disaster. Great destruction or loss of life caused by natural forces. Rural decline, worsening economic conditions in the countryside, including rising unemployment and growing poverty. Spatial inequality, the unequal distribution of wealth or resources in a geographic area so that some places are richer than others. Standard of living, the overall level of comfort and well-being of a group or a country. Urbanization, the movement of people from rural to urban areas, resulting in the growth of urban cities. Tropical cyclone, a severe storm with high winds that spiral around a calm center. These are also called hurricanes or typhoons. Deforestation, removing or clearing away the trees from a forest, often done for farming or ranching. Sustainable development, finding ways in which to use resources without using them up. Terracing, the creation of flat areas on mountain slopes for the purpose of farming. This looks like steps up the side of a mountain. El Nino, a warm ocean current that flows off the west coast of South America every few years. It changes weather patterns around the world and will cause extreme weather. This concludes Lesson 6, Latin America.